Moving forward. I'm going to talk about the idea of hybrid, hybridity, hybrid mobilities, and hybrid cars and hybrid ecologies because they have slightly different meanings. And back in 2000, uh, John Arya and I published an article called The City and the Car. And in that article, we started thinking about the idea that the car and the driver are an assemblage of machine and human. And we thought of that as a hybrid, but we wanted to also go beyond some of the existing ideas of the sort of car and driver as a closed unit and think about the hybridity with the whole surrounding environment. So that initial idea of the hybrid car driver was to start to think about how a mobile assemblage of a person and a vehicle interacts with the affordances of the roadway, the signs, the system of oil and petroleum, and that whole assemblage makes up what we call the hybrid. And once you start thinking that way, you can then think about how the system of automobility gives uh, better access for some hybrids than others. So a person and a bicycle, for example, are often not given the same consideration, the same space on the road, the same safety. And only if you put in good biking infrastructure does the person and bike hybrid become um, doable and, and safer. So it was a way to start thinking about these different mixtures of human movement, vehicular movement, and then space, the design of the spaces that allow for that. So that was our original sort of idea in um, writing about the city and the car. And really the city and the car itself are a giant kind of hybrid system of urbanism and automobility. And that's what we began trying to convey. But now more recently, that has developed into the idea that there are networked interactions with computing and software, and those permeate urban spaces and car spaces. Um, and we were beginning to think about that, but really that idea took off in a lot of directions because other theorists were talking about the idea of networked urbanism, and also what some people called sentient cities and net locality. And they're all different ways to think about the mixture of digital information and physical space. And we wanted to bring to that the idea of movement through this digitally enacted space. And we call that a hybrid ecology. It's one way to think about moving that is uh, both digital and physical at the same time. So we have information that is coming to us on screens and we're using that to navigate through urban space. So I started using the term mobile mediality, like mobile media as a form of uh, reality, mobile mediality, as a way to think about digitally mediated movement. And it's both that we are moving with digital mediation and that media cultures are now mobile. So the information is mobile, the person using it is mobile, and that's a new way to think about um, this uh, mobile mediality as a form of what uh, Ole Jensen calls negotiation in motion. So we're negotiating and we're making sense of things as we move, but the things we're making sense of are both physical spaces and networked connectivity and information that's coming to us. So that was a different sort of view of a hybrid ecology. And what I want to think about then are what are the implications of that for how people are moving around cities. And here I'm thinking of places that are um, more connected and that where we have sort of available Wi-Fi systems and uh, uh, 4G networks that make fast connection available to people. So one thing that happens in that kind of setting, which some people call sort of uh, anytime, anywhere connectivity, is you have the rise of location-aware technology. So devices are locatable, they know their location, they broadcast their location.
And in the effort to combine the study of mobilities with media and communication, the idea of locatability has become really important because locatability means we have location-aware devices and the device itself always knows its location and can broadcast its location. So when you do an internet search or when you pull up an app on your phone, it will vary depending on the location where you're based. It will also push information to you that's dependent on your location. And increasingly, people are connected to location-based social networks. So they're connected to their friends via online networks that broadcast to each other where they are. So that's led to sort of people thinking about the new ways in which we're able to move around with locational awareness. And it changes some of our everyday practices of urban space. So in the book, Mobility and Locative Media, which I co-edited with Adriana de Souza Silva, some of our contributors talked about some of the effects this has. One is the idea of what's called chance orchestration, which is that you kind of uh, know where you're going and you have information before you go, but you also might bump into something new. And so it's both that you're taking a chance, and, um, but you're also orchestrating where you're going. But it's the combination of those that creates a new kind of um, sense of navigating in urban space. The other way to think about that is what Christian Lacop and Yuriko Inada call proximity-aware encounters. And it's when you have on your phone locational information of someone else in your social network or other places in your social network, and as you get near to them, you're aware that they're getting near to you and that you might be passing each other in physical space. And you might actually change your route because either you want to see somebody or you don't want to see them and you're aware of their location. So that's called a proximity aware encounter and it changes the way people might interact when they're using a mobile device and moving around in an urban setting. And this also ties into ideas about mobile gaming and the way in which gaming is kind of filtering more into everyday activity because there's what's called ambient play. So it's not just that you play a game and then you put it away and you go out and do something. It's that while you're going out doing things, you might be playing a game. You might be uh, looking for certain things or looking for certain kinds of encounters. You have a sort of your antenna open to a kind of playfulness, but you're also at the same time navigating in a more practical way. So there's this kind of funny mixture of um, what Le Cop and Ninada call proximity aware walking, where you're both open and playful, but also navigating and moving through this hybrid ecology. The last um, effect of this new hybrid ecology is that there's the need for new kinds of mobile methods or the possibility for new mobile methods. So we're beginning to think about how mobilities researchers might make use of these new location aware um, technologies and new forms of interaction, how they might track them and study them, um, because you both need physical observation and also some kind of digital observation and a combination of the two at once. So a lot of um, efforts are going into developing new methods to understand how people are moving in these new environments and what the effects are on social interaction and on things like um, political mobilization. You know, how do people now gather in a public space using social media, using Twitter? We hear a lot about the, the different revolutions that have drawn on those kinds of media, but there's still the need to really understand it and study it further um, as a sort of future uh, direction in which political action might be happening. And it happens both online and offline at the same time. That's one example. And then I think the other um, question has to do with designing environments. So mobility's research is really picking up on questions now of urban planning and design and how do we design for environments where people are locatable and proximity aware 
and have new kinds of connectivity possible? What kinds of spaces does that call for? Could we design things differently? Could we provide different kinds of information? So will it really be an opportunity to rethink urban public space in new ways? One way to think about designing for this new hybrid space is to think about uh, what kinds of exclusion exist. So some people might have access to all the technology and other people will not. So maybe we need to think more about providing public screens and free Wi-Fi connectivity and other issues to do with um, social exclusion from the new kinds of services that are increasingly going to be available in this um, hybrid space of mobile mediality. When I think about how we might design for new hybrid ecologies that have this digital and physical mixture of activity, there's two different things that come to mind. One is the way in which the city might be reactive um, buildings and surfaces uh, to people with disabilities. So, that, for example, they might have a beacon of some kind uh, that says that a person um, who's either blind or deaf is coming in this direction and the actual surface of the street might react and create a texture for them to follow or create sounds to help guide them across a, an open space. So there's different ways in which we could see this technology um, being built into new kinds of urban architectures. The other big impact it might have is thinking about the mixture of public and private space and the way they're increasingly blurred because we're switching between work and private messages and different kinds of contacts as we're moving around. So that suggests the need for new kinds of spaces also. There won't be this strict divide between private space and then public space, but increasingly it's being blurred. And one way that's happening, for example, is with the sharing economy. So we have co-working spaces, we have shared vehicles, and we have um, even ideas about um, shared streets um, where different kinds of traffic are, sh are sharing the space of the street. And all of that is part of this blurring of the public and the private. And maybe we need to think about building in sort of more spaces where people will pause because they'll be looking at screens or checking information. Maybe they'll be listening to it, but that they'll have sort of quiet spaces or stopping spaces in a way that, I mean, traditional urban space had that, had that kind of civic um, public spaces that were also intimate and small spaces. And we've kind of lost a lot of those in our cities with just sort of streets for traffic. But maybe there'll be a comeback of the sort of small, intimate, pausing space within the urban fabric.